Hey, how you doing? This is Kitch, and welcome back to another episode of Kitch's Blueprint Book. It's been a while since we've had one of these, and really, to tell you the honest truth, it seems like since I've started making this uh, Blueprint Book series, uh, that's when I started the Impractical Factorio series, and uh, really have been not really a lot of need uh, for blueprints and blueprinty things, uh, at least in that series. Not a lot of standard blueprints were going on in that series. Uh, however, I did one for this contraption right here, which is our strip mall. Uh, the idea behind the strip mall is that you know you have your little path going up here, and 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 malls, you know, they they they're not the best looking things in the world sometimes. Um, I, 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 I use Catherine's of Skies mall that, that she has. It's a great mall, works out very excellent, but not really what I was looking for in this playthrough. I wanted something with little shops that you would go in and, and collect all of the items that you need. Uh, we have this one down here, which has inserters and all of our belt things. We have this one up here that has all our logistics stuff, power poles, uh, assembly machines, as well as miners and, uh, chemical plants, things like that down here. And we had this one that had all our train stuff, train signals, train tracks, um, beacons, roboports, and all of our logistics chests and, and things like that on this shop. And I expanded it in the practical Impractical Factorio series and uh, never updated the blueprint. So that's what we're doing right here. This is the 2.0 version of our mall. Um, okay, so first off, I made a change down here. Um, as we got into the blue belt manufacturing and started really seriously producing some belts, um, it became very, very clear very quickly that we weren't getting enough gears. Um, so I, I kind of lazily attached this uh, extra gear facility on the side. Um, and it, it seems to keep up pretty well. I mean, if we're constantly using Blue Belt, it's not going to really keep up. But it's good enough. Good enough uh, for, you know, for a mall. For a mall, it keeps up with it just fine. And uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. However, if you're belting gears, um, of course, you don't even need this over here. And uh, if gears are the only thing you're making on site, basically what you need are four yellow belts of iron coming in. Um, you could probably get by with less since it's a mall. So most of the time this thing is sitting idle like this. But during peak times, I mean, we're really going through this. Uh, so I would actually suggest the four yellow belts and the... Um, uh, 16 uh, machines pumping out gears. Um, I have them going out onto yellow belts, which combine right here into a red belt. So even though it's two yellow belts coming out, a, a red belt is equal to two yellow belts. So that comes out uh, actually fairly well. Um, and uh, basically, I added the extensions on up here. And the first extension we have, the first shop we have is our defense shop. Uh, we have walls, gates, uh, poison capsules, and I don't even remember what these are. What are these? Slowdown capsules. I didn't use these a lot. The, the, the time I really tried to use these, um, I died <laughs> in, in that last series and never really gave them much thought. However, we do have the combat robots over here, and I really, really like these, especially once they get upgraded. Uh, these destroyer capsules are awesome. You just let them out, and they you just go and walk through the bases, and that's basically all you have to do. Uh, then we have radar and turrets and uh, the uh, repair packs as well as solar panels up here. Um, these guys were, I don't know, we just needed a place to do it. So I made them there. Um, and then up here we have our nuclear mall, which uh, we have, we're building reactors. Uh, we're building our uh, centrifuges. We have the heat pipe and heat exchangers and turbines down here. Uh, and we have our concrete mall up here, which is producing the regular concrete and refined hazard concrete as well as, um, yeah, that, <laughs> all that stuff, uh, which is, of course, needed to make reactors. Um, one change that I did do in this version that I don't remember if I did in the previous version of the Blueprint book, but all of these chests are controlled by circuit conditions now instead of uh, basically blocking off the chests. Uh it, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, okay, so let's say we grabbed uh, like this many. And if we had this blocked off all the way and we wanted to come up and dump our excess concrete in here, these three right here would still be on our inventory because we had it blocked off to there and we couldn't get rid of those three. Now, granted, we could do the thing where we exit out 
put it in, and then bring it back. But, you know, why do that whenever we can control it with a circuit condition? Um, so in this particular iteration of the mall, everything is uh, covered by... Um, by red wire circuit conditions, it's basically just everything plus most of them are set at like 50, um, except for the things that you tend to use a lot of, like railroad track and uh, and like uh, belts. Like I've got blue set to 400. You can go through and set these wherever you want, or even you know do do whatever you want. You know, I just kind of throw these blueprints out there. I expect them to be modified. Um, in my Impractical Factorio series, in case you're not familiar with uh, the channel or the series or, or what I was doing, I did do barreling of fluids in that, so that's why we're getting uh, fluids being unbarreled here. Uh, the other limitation I had on the series was that everything was going to be built on site. We only had base materials like iron and steel and coal, things just the base materials on the bus. So anything like uh, green circuits, red circuits, gears... Uh, plastic in this case, all that stuff had to be made on site. So that's what this contraption is over here. Uh, this is producing everything we need over here in order to produce all of this stuff over here. With some minor exceptions, I'll point those out in a minute. Uh, but if you're making red circuits, if you're making green circuits, if you're making plastic somewhere else, all this stuff over here is completely unnecessary and can be removed. I think I only have, I think I only have one, maybe two iron lines coming in here. And uh, maybe one copper line. Uh, I think there's one copper machine here making copper wire and uh, splitting off and, and, and going over here to, to supply basically the whole mall. So, so that's there. Um, you may have to do a little bit of redesigning um, on, on that front. Um, so this is like the first iteration. This, If you are watching the Impractical Factorio series and you did not watch the previous Blueprint book series or do not remember it because I barely do, um, this is not the exact same mall. I actually ran through and cleaned it up quite a bit. Uh, it's still not perfect. Still probably needs a little bit of work, but it's not as not nearly as naughty as uh, naughty. Naughty with a K. Uh, as the last uh, mall was as far as what was going on over in this department. It's a little bit cleaned up, still not perfect, but, you know, again, what I was going for was this look uh, going around here, not necessarily what's going on back here. So I think I accomplished that. Um, and uh, I have a couple of different flavors of this mall. Uh, there's this one, which is pretty pretty close to what I was using early in Practical Factorio, or Impractical Factorio, I should say. And over on this one, I have a more advanced version. And uh, this is the one that has the buffer chests. Uh, and, and what I use the buffer chests for are basically for item recycling. Um, I found that if you use a buffer chest uh, as the recipient, as well as uh, buffer chests here for recyclers, it works. And you don't get the situation... Where, like, if I had this as a requester chest, like I normally would in a mall, uh, if I have that as a requester chest and you have a buffer chest over here for, or a, a requester chest even, for doing the recycling, it's going to pull out of here until this is full. And I didn't want that to happen. Uh, so making this a buffer chest that doesn't have any requests uh, prevents that from happening. But if I come through here and just, you know, if I take these guys out here and just grab some some of the yellows... And, uh, you know, throw them in my garbage. Oh, I can't do it because I have the creative mode on. Uh, let's do it. Uh, can we do a uh, active provider? Yes, we can. Throw that in there. And they fill up those buffer chests so they can get recycled. Um, basically, our our belt will, will buffer in storage, but it will slowly get recycled out as um, it, it, it gets processed through the system. And I put these extra little controls on here that say this inserter that grabs the belt from this assembly machine is not going to be active unless this chest is zero. So if there's something in the recycle chest, it's not going to pull an extra one. And uh, I set those up on all of the belt manufacturers, um, some of the uh, assembly, um, inserter manufacturers, uh, some here for pipe. Um, I, I didn't get everything. I just got most of the things. Uh, I put uh, one in here for the chests uh, so we can recycle the steel chests on this line right here. Uh, the one that spits out of this factory is not going to be active if this chest has something in it. 
Um, and I believe that's it. Oh, we put some on concrete as well uh, so that we can recycle concrete into the refined concrete or the hazard concrete, as it were. And another pipe one up here. Um, so this is like the more advanced version of the mall that has all the recycling system set up. Uh, what you might want to use in more of a late game scenario. And over on this side, I was just kind of toying around. Um, barreling liquids. I don't know if I'm ever going to mess with that again. But um, I have this one set up to not not, not use the, <laughs> the liquid barrels. Um, basically, it's, it's pretty much the same. Except that, uh, you know... The water comes in up here, and we have a petroleum as well as a lubricant pipe coming in right here. And uh, still making plastic, still making all this other stuff. Um, if you, you know, if you are running this stuff on the line, um, it should be pretty trivial to hook these guys up. Um, pretty much all these intermediate components come in down on this side, and uh, you can you can see where they come in. Um, if you're not uh, doing red circuits, you don't even need the petroleum at all. You don't need this coal down here at all. Y you guys know how to play Factorio. You, you can you can figure that out. But uh, I'll throw all of these three blueprints up on there. They're not uh, particularly perfect or optimized or anything like that yet. I just kind of tried to make do up here. I just tried to hook this into the the uh, setup I had in Impractical Factorio. It works. It's functional. Is it 100% optimized? No, not even close. But um, it, it it works, and it doesn't look it doesn't look terrible. It it could look a lot worse. Let's just say that. But yeah, um, uh, so uh, that's my uh, strip mall, uh, my completely practical and totally sane strip mall uh, version 2.0. And uh, I'm going to post uh, these blueprints up on Factorio Prints as well as Paste Bin as usual. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to check out the Impractical Factorio series, do look that one up. It was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I don't know. I think I, I think I learned a lot more about the game in that series than any of the others that I did before. And uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next Factorio series. Have a good one.